I want to begin by expressing the deep regrets of Mr. Slim, who, despite his wish, cannot be with us today. Also, if I may, I would like to express a few thoughts on the global context in which this meeting of the new Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development is taking place. As we all know, in recent times, in many regions of the world, countries have implemented profound economic reforms. Overall, many have attained macroeconomic stability, have achieved stronger democracies, and improved social indicators. Yet, despite important advances, in many regions, dissatisfaction remains. There are multiple reasons that explain this, which may vary, of course, by country. But in most regions, this is due to insufficient, sustainable economic growth, to the low impact in reducing inequality, and in obtaining decisive poverty reduction. It is clear that we need to move forward in these objectives. In my opinion, the relevant instruments that we have to achieve these objectives in this 21st century are substantially different from those of the 20th century. We are experiencing a profound change. It is a new context which forces us to be creative as we respond to our economic, social, and environmental challenges. I truly believe that an era is ending. The era of education only via classrooms is ending, of health service only in clinics is ending, of society restricted to public information, of lack of contact between families and friends is ending, of incommunication between businesses and clients is ending, and a new era is emerging. Today, as we all know, the biggest bookseller does not have bookstores. The company with more retail sales has no stores. The biggest school in the world does not have classrooms. And the biggest social network does not belong to a specific country. In a way, we are in the process of drafting a new society. To a large degree, all this is possible due to broadband availability. We must consider and act on this as we move to fulfill the sustainable development goals endorsed yesterday by governments and the UN international community, among others. The virtues of broadband are many, if applied conveniently, as we just saw in the video. The main responsibility of a state is the security of its citizens. Mobile telephone records and broadband use can guide us to contain the spread of epidemics. Broadband can contribute to have a more efficient relationship between the state and the citizens, improving the information flow and dialogue among them and it can support the rule of law. Telemedicine can dampen inequalities and gaps in providing health services to remote and poor areas. Pertinent use of broadband is also a powerful instrument to deal with educational content availability, underperformance, and dropout rates. Broadband use also helps businesses to do cross-selling, upselling, and to create customer loyalty. Broadband networks help to attain the potential of our scientific communities. And in terms of integration to global markets, broadband allows businesses reaching markets abroad for B2B and global businesses to consumers, B2C, like never before. All these possibilities need to be better assessed and scaled up if they are to have a substantial positive impact. In fact, broadband can provide a more level playing field between poor and richer families, between SMEs and large companies between developing and developed nations. Digital inclusion may be the most powerful instrument to deal with persistent inequality and lack of opportunity, and it can be a valuable asset to economies for them to grow in a sustainable way. Broadband is the essential infrastructure in this period of the 21st century, and it touches all of the sustainable development goals. Yet, 53% of the world today is still offline and 80% of the population in developing countries does not have access to mobile broadband. This is a great need on which we need to reflect and on which we need to act. As we initiate the road to fulfill the sustainable development goals, let us remember that these are not only quantitative goals for targeted indicators. They are much more than that. They constitute a framework for the attainment of basic human rights for millions of people and should be a decisive driving force for cooperation. 
This Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development can play an important role for their attainment in advocacy, in identifying and supporting a pertinent telecom ecosystem, in promoting digital inclusion, and in sharing best practices, among other valuable actions. In these five years, our Commission has managed to strongly advocate for the role of broadband networks, services, and applications as key enablers of development. It has contributed to a shift away from the perception of broadband as a luxury to broadband as a basic infrastructure, and in certain countries, even broadband as a human right. Our Commission has inspired many countries to set up ambitious national broadband strategies, plans, and goals, adopting the broadband targets agreed by our Commission back in the year 2011. These are important contributions. We live in an era of good technological fortune. We have our dis at our disposition a fantastic technology at a fascinating moment, and we can do much good if we try. On behalf of Mr. Lim Slim, I want to welcome all new members of the Commission. It is an honor and a privilege to have you with us. I greet the continuing members, and I wish that we all have a productive and successful meeting for the benefit of sustainable development. Thank you for being here, and again, welcome to the Commission.